Here we go again. Nice outfit. I mean, this court. I mean, this is an important thing. That's, would you, no, we're not church, but would you wear that to church? I don't know, sir. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Because it's not appropriate? T-shirt against you, sir. Well, you, well, you think? The Friday the 13th slasher is is what is appropriate? I mean, this is important. This is your life. This is the Constitution, you know, liberty. And you're looking at... Serious off, uh, uh, serious offense, a second degree felony, and yes, what's the other one? I'll grew my suit. I'm sorry. Huh? I said I'll grew my suit. I'm sorry. Well, there. Uh, look, I'm, I'm on the board of the Salvation Army. If you need clothes, you can get some clothes yeah. anywhere, yeah. anywhere, yeah. and they're nice clothes. Th these are second degree felonies, and yes, you're you're looking at up to twenty years in prison on each case, and. Uh, uh, then I just think that's a better way to dress to show respect to the whole proceeding or you don't have to but it just shows that you don't have much respect for the way this is operating but nonetheless you're looking at 40 years up to 40 years in prison if you had all this I would find that serious what's the status now um, so since we last met Mr. Kibito, he has registered with local law enforcement. He's entered sex offender treatment with a licensed uh, treatment provider. He has um, gained employment with McDonald's Mechanical Services. He, I have the two letters of apology ready to send, and I did get a substance abuse assessment completed a on him. A substance what? abuse assessment. Uh, the recommendation was frequent UAs, and if he's positive, to refer him to JCDI. And he's passing all of those. Yes, sir. He yeah. tested negative. Are you working somewhere? Yes, sir. Where? I work for McDonald Mechanical Services. I do HVAC. Okay. How much do you make an hour on that? Twenty-eight dollars an hour, sir. How much? Twenty-eight. Well, that's seventy grand a year. Plus two, yes, sir. How are we doing on fees? Is there? He has made a payment of one twenty-five this month. Um. I do need to get his time served uh, taken out of his balance. Okay. How long have you been working for them? Uh, for about a little over maybe three weeks. Now. Three weeks? Yes, sir. I had a job like uh, the second week out when I got out of prison. Well, okay. Well, you'll be able to afford some better clothing. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I'm sorry. Like I, well, told you, just, I'm, I mean, it's unexcusable, I understand, but yeah. I promise I'm not going to get it. And when people say we, we don't have clothing, yeah, between, well, Salvation Army is, has very good clothing. Yes, sir. I, and that's okay. But these are my recreation clothes. Bradley Atkins, is that you, sir? Yes, sir. Mr. Gilmore is here with you. And this is a uh, status review. Yes, everybody. What is the status here? Oh, I've got a an, an administrative hearing August 1st. Scheduled judicial review, which I ordered. And it says you tested positive. For THC in February, March, and May for Dallas County continues uh, to uh, use drugs, unsuccessfully discharged from safety aftercare. You don't have a chance to shake your head. Yes. The, you have worked zero hours, have 800 hours of community service. Were you on probation? Three years now? Over three years? Yes, sir. No. Community service, and you'll have a chance sorry, to speak, Mr. Interrupter. And uh, as, as today, as of today, you owe six thousand eight hundred eighty-three dollars, and are in arrears seven hundred eighteen. You have, according to the probation officer, you have shown less than adequate progress since your probation. 
you appeared in the department for a hearing uh, to discuss and hold it. A year now, or a year analysis was conducted before this hearing on July, and it tested positive for THC, methadone, and synthetic marijuana. Yes, it did. July of the year. Huh? July 23rd this year. This year? Yeah, two months ago. Less than two months ago. While in the UA restroom, you adamantly denied any substance use. You mentioned taking a 14 panel drug test the day before that you obtained from CVS Pharmacy that were negative. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to you you have to understand they don't work for me, and the panels that they use are different from what we use. You ask for a second test, a second instant test. This officer requested that the UA urinalysis tech conduct a second test. That second test was revealed the same results as the first test. Anyway. Um, that your rebuttal with the CVS test has zero credibility with me because I know about it. Okay, Supervisor Wright advised you that you have two options, safety relapse or an administrative hearing. Uh, you're, you said you would rather neither, but instead wait for your analysis tests. Well, if you if you only had the option, uh, if you were only the decision maker, maker, but you're not, I am, and we stand by our tests. Okay, so the positive your analysis for tetrahydrocannabinol marijuana and being unsuccessfully discharged from safety aftercare while in Dallas County are to be addressed. And then it should be noted that during a telephone conversation with the defendant on February 29th, the defendant says, I got a CBD gummy from a person at work for knee pain. During a telephone conversation on June 6th, you said, I took an HHC CBD energy shot. And according to the probation office, you are not being held accountable for your substance abuse, which are clear indications that you are not ready for a sober lifestyle. So we have scheduled this. That about summarizes this. All right, look, <clears throat> the test. Are, are, accurate enough that, that they uh, are relied upon. And you can imagine how many times people uh, deny that uh, there must be something wrong with the tennis. Uh, but uh, we're going to follow the test results and um, hold people accountable. Or else what we're doing here is just a gigantic waste of time and effort. 85% of the people are successful on my watch. 85%. 85%. Are you the 15% or not? That's what we're going to find out. But 85%, which is higher than the national average of seven. We're twice better because of the way the probation officers are dedicated to getting their clients, you, pulled across the finish line successfully. All right, so here we are. Uh, we've got uh, uh, these allegations and I'm looking at uh, this motion to revoke that was filed two years ago. You remember that one, sir? How'd you do in that? 
support and safety. Well, what did you plead true to, among other things? Number nine, you pleaded true to failing the drug test with tetrahydrocannabinol in your system in February of 2022. So you're, you're not incapable of using tetrahydrocannabinol. Plus, you admitted to theft of property, being in a county when you weren't supposed to be, and again, uh, testing positive for drugs. So, we thought we all we had that all resolved, and then now here we are again. What should we do? What's probation office suggestions for me? We've You're going to get a chance to be heard, just it. like you were last time. Which here you are again, which shouldn't even be. I shouldn't see you after the first time I put you on probation, sir. Should never have to see you again, except mm -hmm. to celebrate your completed success successfully. This is the third time you've been performing. Go ahead. So, as outlined in the uh, in the hearing, we gave him. Uh, we tried to give some options. You know, uh, safety relapse, or you know, go back, come back before you judge for a judicial review, and uh, let the court decide. So, those were um, those okay. were our options. So, whatever the court decided in this matter. What about the safety relapse program? What do you think about that? What do y'all think about that? Well, Judge, I believe at the time I had the administrative hearing, he chose to come here for certain I, reasons. I, 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 and here I, we are. I do have some things I'd like to address. Go ahead. Appropriate time. I believe the court stated earlier that he failed a drug test on July 23rd, 2024 for um, synthetic marijuana and marijuana and opioids and methadone. But in reality, that wasn't off for confirmation. And it only it, it did come back positive for, for marijuana and alcohol. But is that all that's necessary? Is that, is, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Is that all that, ne isn't that all that's necessary? Yes, I just, I just okay. want to make sure that. All right. that that's, that the I think it's the same thing. It looks like a repeat performance from what happened in 22. Mr. Atkins states that he is, he disputed the drug test at the time. He states that he is drug free. He did take a hair follicle test at my direction. Um, I have provided that to the state. I know that the court states, as stated in the past, that hair follicle tests and urine tests aren't always the same standard, mm -hmm. um, but he was he was negative on all those tests also he states that he could pass a drug test today if it was important for any reason um, it was important a couple months ago he stated at the time he's supposed that, to pass it every day right i stated you can't purge it by okay I flunk, but i'll pass it today that purge that won't purge it I believe at the time he failed the test for marijuana he did state that he used legal cbd products that do cause a false positives on thc drug tests um and uh, he quit using those products, and I don't believe that he will have that issue anymore. Um, I think what would be important here, though, is to increase. Why would you do something like that? Why would you do that? If that's true, why would you do that? At THC, and it would cause a positive. I'd broken my phalanx bone in my foot. I declined all pain meds. I should try to find an actual approach to it. Of course, Judge, at the time when he was originally charged, the court did not have the additional um, rules and regulations related to legal marijuana because it wasn't legal at the time. Of course, now the court has bond conditions related to those. But at the time, the, the substance was not ever addressed, in my opinion, in my knowledge with him. It's a new recent development since he was originally put on probation. Okay. full time, Jones. <clears throat> All right. What else? Well, Judge, he does have a very good job. Um, yeah, there's a lot to lose. That's why, is, why would you flirt with trouble? He does have a lot to lose. He has a lot more to lose than probably a lot of my clients. What we're asking the court to do is consider some additional um, safeguards for drug treat, uh, for drug use. He's I've discussed with him the, the drug patch. He's willing to do whatever the court orders him to do. He would like the opportunity to not lose his job. And he's living and working in Dallas, reporting in Dallas. But if the court wants to see him regularly to make sure he is in full compliance with whatever additional measures, the court will he, he will do that. He can travel here today and travel here anytime. It wasn't us. It was Dallas County that did the test, right? Yes. Sir. 
Which, and with them unsuccessfully discharging him from uh, Safe P, they sent his case back. So, yeah, that was tough. That's my fiance. He's a, he's a physician in Dallas, Collin County. And uh, she's a huge support system for me. So, uh, I would. If you would please let me transfer there. Look, I'll redo the look. program. The uh, after the program. what's fair for one is fair for everybody. It's not unusual for people to try to explain away a positive test. We're either going to follow the scientific method or not. If I don't, I open the door for one, I open it for everybody who comes in with a similar excuse. They'll go, I want the uh, Bradley Atkins. I'll use the Bradley Atkins story, please. please. I have to let everybody through. That's what's fair, sir. But you, you're not admitting to it, but you're admitting to using CBD products. That's your, you're flirting with trouble there. You don't have to do that. Why would you even get near that? With what can bleed over. And besides, uh, you don't know what's in those, really, at the end of the day. Correct. All right. But, but that's your, you, you're putting yourself in vulnerability. That, and that, that's your choice. I, I would have, I think a reasonable person would just go, I don't even know what's in that stuff. Um, so I'm not going to do it. Mr. Gallimore is here with you, and this is a uh, status review. Yes, everybody, w what is the status here? Oh, I've got a an, an administrative hearing, August 1st, scheduled judicial review, which I ordered, and it says you tested positive. For THC in February, March, and May for Dallas County continues uh, to uh, use drugs, unsuccessfully discharged from safety aftercare. You have a chance to shake your head. Yes. The, you have worked zero hours, have 800 hours of community service. Will you on probation? Three years now? Over three years? Yes, sir. No. Community service and you'll have a chance sorry, to speak, Mr. Interrupter. And uh, as, as today, as of today, you owe six thousand eight hundred eighty-three dollars and are in arrears seven hundred eighteen. You have, according to the probation officer, you have shown less than adequate progress since your probation. You appeared in the department for a hearing. Uh, to discuss and a year now or a year analysis was conducted before this hearing on July and it tested positive for THC, methadone, and synthetic marijuana. Yes, it did. You'll have a year. Huh? Year? You'll have 20 this year. This year? Yeah, two months ago. Less than two months ago. While in the UA restroom, you adamantly denied any substance use. You mentioned taking a 14 panel drug test the day before that you obtained from CVS Pharmacy that was negative. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
you have to you you have to understand they don't work for me and the panels that they use are different from what we use you ask for a second test a second instant test this officer requested that the ua your analysis tech conduct a second test that second test was revealed the same results as the first test anyway um, that your rebuttal with the cvs test has zero credibility with me because i know about it Okay, Supervisor Wright advised you that you have two options, safety relapse or an administrative hearing. Uh, you're, you said you would rather neither, but instead wait for your analysis tests. Well, if you, if you only had the option, uh, if you were only the decision maker, maker, but you're not, I am, and we stand by our tests. Okay, so the positive of your analysis, for tetrahydrocannabinol marijuana and being unsuccessfully discharged from safety aftercare while in Dallas County or to be addressed. And then it should be noted that during a telephone conversation with the defendant on February 29th, the defendant says, I got a CBD gummy from a person at work for knee pain. During a telephone conversation on June 6th, you said, I took an HHC CBD energy shot. And according to the probation office, you are not being held accountable for your substance abuse, which are clear indications that you are not ready for a sober lifestyle. So we have scheduled this. That about summarizes this. All right, look, <clears throat> the test. Or, or, accurate enough that, that they uh, are relied upon. And you can imagine how many times people uh, deny that uh, <clears throat> there must be something wrong with the test. Uh, but uh, we're going to follow the test results and uh, hold people accountable. Or else what we're doing here is just a gigantic waste of time and effort. 85% of the people are successful on my watch. 85%. 85%. Are you the 15% or not? That's what we're going to find out. But 85%, which is higher than the national average of seven. We're twice better because of the way the probation officers are dedicated to getting their clients, you, pulled across the finish line successfully. All right, so here we are. Uh, we've got uh, uh, these allegations and I'm looking at uh, this motion to revoke that was filed two years ago you remember that one sir how'd you do in that support well what did you plead true to among other things number nine you pleaded true to failing the drug test with tetrahydrocannabinol in your system in february of 2022 so you're you're not incapable of using tetrahydrocannabinol. Plus, you admitted to theft of property, being in a county when you weren't supposed to be, and again, uh, testing positive for drugs. So, we thought we all we had that all resolved, and then now here we are again. What should we do? What's probation office suggestions for you? Would You're going to get a chance to be heard. Just like you were last time. 
which here you are again, which shouldn't even be. I shouldn't see you after the first time I put you on probation, sir. Should never have to see you again, except mm -hmm. to celebrate your completed success successfully. This is the third time you've been before me. Go ahead. So as outlined in the uh, in the hearing, we gave him uh, we tried to give some options, you know, uh, safety relapse or, you know, go back, come back before you judge for a judicial review and uh, let the court decide. So those were, um, those okay. were our options. So whatever the court decided in this matter. What about the safety relapse program? Sorry. What do you think about that? What do y'all think about that? Well, Judge, I believe at the time I had the administrative hearing, he chose to come here for certain I, reasons. I, 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 and here I, we are. I do have some things I'd like to address. Go ahead. Appropriate time. I believe the court stated earlier that he failed a drug test on July 23rd, 2024 for um, synthetic marijuana and marijuana and opioids and methadone. But in reality, that wasn't up for confirmation. And it only it, it did come back positive for, for marijuana and alcohol. But is that all that's necessary? Is that is I'm sorry, I don't understand. Is that all that isn't that all that's necessary? Yes, I just I just okay. want to make sure that, all right. that that's what it, the I think it's the same thing. It looks like a repeat performance from what happened in 22. Mr. Atkins states that he is he disputed the drug test at the time. He states that he is drug free. He did take a hair follicle test at my direction. Um, I have provided that to the state. I know that the court states has stated in the past that hair follicle tests and urine tests aren't always the same standard. Mm -hmm. Um, but he was he was negative on all those tests also he states that he could pass a drug test today if it was important for any reason um, it was important a couple months ago he stated at the time he's supposed to pass it every day right i stated you can't purge it by okay I flunk, but i'll pass it today that purge that won't purge it I believe at the time he failed the test for marijuana he did state that he used legal cbd products that do cause a false positives on thc drug tests um and uh, he quit using those products, and I don't believe that he will have that issue anymore. Um, I think what would be important here, though, is to increase. Why would you do something like that? Why would you do that? If that's true, why would you do that? I was at THC, and it would cause a positive. I'd broken my phalanx bone in my foot. I declined all pain meds. I should try to find a natural approach to it. <laughs> Of course, Judge, at the time when he was originally charged, the court did not have the additional um, rules and regulations related to legal marijuana because it wasn't legal at the time. Of course, now the court has bond conditions related to those. But at the time, the, the substance not ever addressed, in my opinion, in my knowledge with him. It's a new recent development since he was originally put on probation. Okay. Full time, Josh. <clears throat> All right. What else? Well, Judge, he does have a very good job. Um, yeah, there's a lot to lose. That's why, is, why would you flirt with trouble? He does have a lot to lose. He has a lot more to lose than probably a lot of my clients. What we're asking the court to do is consider some additional um, safeguards for drug treat, uh, for drug use. He's I've discussed with him the uh, uh, drug patch. He's willing to do whatever the court orders him to do. He would like the opportunity to not lose his job. And he's living and working in Dallas, reporting in Dallas. But if the court wants to see him regularly to make sure he is in full compliance with whatever additional measures, the court will he, he will do that. He can travel here today. He can travel here anytime. It wasn't us. It was Dallas County that did the test, right? Yes, sir. And with them unsuccessfully discharging him from uh, SAFP, they sent his case back. So yeah, it's important. Dallas County. I've been with my fiance. He's a, he's a physician in Dallas, the Collin County. And uh, she's a huge support system for me. So uh, I would, if you, know, if you would please, let me transfer there. Look, I'll redo the program. The uh, after tip program. What's fair for one is fair for everybody. It's not unusual for people to try to explain away a positive test. We're either going to follow the scientific method or not. If I don't. I open the door for one. I open it for everybody who comes in with a similar excuse. They'll go, I want the uh, Bradley Atkins. I'll use the Bradley Atkins story, please. please. I have to let everybody through. That's what's fair, sir. But 
you, you're not admitting to it, but you're admitting to using CBD products. That's your, you're flirting with trouble there. You don't have to do that. Why would you even get near that with what can bleed over? And besides, uh, you don't know what's in those, really, at the end of the day. Correct. All right. But, but that's your, you, you're putting yourself in vulnerability. That, and that, that's your choice. I, I would have, I think a reasonable person would just go, I don't even know what's in that stuff. Um, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get near it. But there you are. And here you are. And we're going to follow the scientific method. I'm going to believe in science rather than a story that really, for a smart guy, you could have done better on a story. Why would you? Why would you get around this stuff? All right. So can I please use the drug patch? Sir? Can you please drug patch? Oh, I, I'll probably put you on a drug patch, but that still doesn't purge the mistake you made. <laughs> Judge. Yes, sir. What do you have to say? Go ahead. I'm tired of looking at Mr. Atkins, to be honest with you, well, Judge. That's this not, is that's it, not the test. I understand, but I, I start that because I want to remind Your Honor where this starts. The story starts in 2019 with this offense where he breaks in and he steals his grandmother's pain medication. That's the burger of a habitation. There were actually two charges because he didn't just stop with her. He did, he did the next door neighbor at the senior citizen living place at this hat. This man has had problems since 2019. Reluctantly, I dropped one of the charges and agreed to place him on probation because I was convinced then by his defense counsel that he was going to get help. He was going to be a changed man. We weren't going to see him again. In 2022, when he came back in here because he had continued to do the same kind of conduct and he was caught inside of a hardware store, supposedly under the influence again, stealing. That, those excuses were offered, and Your Honor heard a hearing. He entered pleas as far as that was concerned, and we decided that the best thing to do was to get his attention and send him off to safe pay. Now we're sitting here listening to so, more yeah. excuses. Hold on. There was also 90 days in jail. Yes, Your Honor, I apologize. I'm, I'm trying to be brief. But the, I understand, but the point is, is you know, you couldn't have enjoyed 90 days in jail. Your Honor, I will always back you with whatever decision you make, but I'm telling you, my own personal opinion is that Mr. Atkins has used up every excuse that he can. It's time for him to go to prison. Well, if it if it is, you're looking at up to 20 years in prison. You understand? Judge, it may not change anything. Yeah, go ahead. It's not relevant to what we were just talking about, but it was brought up that Mr. Atkins was behind his money, and it's my understanding he has uh, paid off. That's the least of it. Sure, That's I, the I least of it. I, make sure it was, I mean, it doesn't do any good to be just make sure it's not. intoxicated, but paying back. I mean, that's not, I mean, it's, it's well-being of all parties, including the defendant. That's what this court wants. And okay, what other options do we have other than this? Uh, which isn't a bad idea. Um, a what? What are the options from probation that we can use here? This has mentioned before. We can do the uh, the drug patch uh, more. Relapse. Safety relapse. What does that I mean, entail? That, uh, I'm so relaxed. it's so basically it'll go he'll go back through the same program as as safety, How long is but it'd be program? a little bit more intense. How long is that program? Uh, that program six is months. six months. Mm -hmm. Dang. I wish you wouldn't have tested positive. So don't be shaking your head. Judge uh, 20 years. You're gonna get 20 years in prison, which I can do. Here, it would take him 20 seconds. I'm trying to, 
we're trying to give you all the opportunity to help yourself, which are, it's like we're, we're trying to help you and you're, here's some money, go do the right thing. Okay, I'll buy a stick of dynamite and light it and put it in my shorts. That's what's happening. Judge, I would like to point out that he did finish the SafeP program. What other uh, programs do we have? That would be the that, that would probably at this point right now, Judge, that would probably be the best uh the best option as far as the SafeP relapse. He was unsuccessfully discharged from the after uh, from the after uh, care program due to his substance use. Yeah, that's a transition spot when they finish yeah, the SAP that's program. That's yeah. bad. That that that's the the thing that stinks here. However, the the inpatient portion, the longest portion, was successfully completed. It was the last month of the outpatient program that was not completed successfully. It, it seems like an, another outpatient program. If it was successfully completed, it would not be necessary for the court to use inpatient resources. Okay. Uh, I understand. Just had the Olympics. You run the mile. You set a world record. You're ahead of everybody by 100 yards. At the finish line, you stumble, fall, and you don't get up. What do you get? Participation matter? Not even that. Doesn't matter if 99% of the time you were ahead. You got a completer successfully. That's like everybody is. Anyway, we're taking too much time. This is uh, enough. Um, the uh, what I want to do is uh, I'm I'm going to look at this. I'm going to come back in a week on this and see if there are any al other alternatives other than the this other method but you're going to be on a drug patch immediately yes. as a modified condition but there's going to be some other programs that we're going to add to it and you're you're beginning to get too busy on this this is all problems and what's well, worse, you got my attention, which you don't want. But this is your choices. So I'm going to reset this uh, one week. Okay, here. And deal with it. Uh, everybody will have a chance and we'll see what's happening.